Thanks to Brilliant for supporting this SciShow video. As a SciShow viewer, you can keep building your STEM skills with a 30-day free trial and 20% off an annual premium subscription at brilliant.org scishow. If you have ever taken a psychology class, chances are you have learned about the so-called gorilla experiment. Maybe you've even done the gorilla experiment yourself. In this study, participants are asked to watch a video of two teams passing a couple of basketballs around and count the number of passes made by just one team. And many people, including myself, were so focused on that task that they somehow missed the human in a gorilla suit that shows up halfway through the video and strolls right through the scene. Scientists have been researching this strange kind of blindness for decades, and much like a video with a gorilla hiding in plain sight, there is still more to see. The Gorilla Experiment was first published back in 1999, so I saw it when I was in college, like a year after it came out. But it was a variation on a type of experiment from the 1970s and 1980s that featured a woman carrying an open umbrella instead of a woman in a gorilla suit. But instead of having her walk through the scene, the video of this umbrella lady was superimposed over the video of the basketball players, so both she and the players were all a little transparent. That's not exactly a sight we encounter in the real world, so some follow-up research was needed to get a better sense of why so many people just didn't see her, and what tweaks to the scenario might make her more or less likely to stand out. Enter a couple of dudes from Harvard. In addition to having a woman with an umbrella actually walk through the basketball players, they added an alternative condition that was, you know, a little more amusing. And there were a few other parameters to the experiment, like half of the participants were told to monitor the team wearing white shirts, and half monitored the team wearing black. Meanwhile, a different half only had to count the total number of passes, while the rest had the more difficult task of remembering how many passes were thrown and how many were bounced. And people were more likely to notice the interruption if they were doing the easier task. It was it's also easier for people to spot the black gorilla when they had been instructed to count passes between the black shirt team. That suggests humans are more likely to notice unexpected things that are more similar to the task at hand. And maybe that's why more people noticed the human carrying an umbrella than the non-human gorilla suit. But out of the nearly 200 participants in this study, 46% of them completely missed either the umbrella lady or the gorilla lady walking through the scene. It was a perfect demonstration of what scientists call inattentional blindness or the failure to perceive something simply because you're not paying attention to it. And to understand how this inattentional blindness actually works, we've got to understand where it happens inside of us. Because visual processing takes several steps. Sure, light hits our retinas and a signal gets sent from our eyes to the brain, but the brain takes a few steps of its own, too. First, it figures out the basic features of an image, like the orientation of lines, color, and direction of motion. Then it starts to organize those into general general shapes. Those shapes get put together, and the bigger picture starts to emerge, and we slowly apply our previous knowledge to figure out what things are. And finally, it enters our conscious awareness, and we actually perceive the image. But unfortunately, these steps aren't entirely linear. Information that's processed in later steps, like how much attention you're paying, is often sent back to previous steps for another round of updated processing. So inattentional blindness arises at some point in this big, loop-filled process. But scientists are still working on finding exactly where. One hypothesis is that when you're focused on one thing, like counting basketball passes, is you literally don't even look at other things, like a wayward gorilla. Your eyes just skip over it. However, one study from 2006 tracked where 21 German children were looking while they watched a gorilla experiment video, and the kids who didn't see the gorilla looked at it for the same amount of time as the children who did report seeing it. So it's probably happening somewhere in the brain. It could be that feedback from a later processing step loops back around to the start and tells your brain to not even bother processing the gorilla, because it isn't important right now. Maybe the brain processes that there's totally a gorilla there, but the news gets filtered out right before you can become consciously aware of it. Or maybe you do actually perceive the gorilla, but your focus on the basketball passes makes you less likely to remember you did. These are all things researchers are trying to figure out. In a 2023 paper, this 
year, a long time after the original experiment, one team considered that other attention studies demonstrate we tend to see objects moving really fast through our field of vision, or things that just pop up and disappear. So they repeated the 1999 experiment, but with a few changes. In one version, they had the gorilla move faster, taking two or six seconds to move across the screen instead of the ten seconds in the original video. They also had a version where the gorilla leapt across the scene more like an actual gorilla would move. And sure enough, people who were counting passes made by the white shirt team were more likely to report seeing the gorilla the faster it was moving, as well as when it was leaping. For participants counting passes by the black shirt team, a speed boost didn't matter as much, but that's probably because the gorilla was already easy enough for them to spot in the original conditions. Because the basic features of movement, like the direction and speed, are handled in some of the earliest stages of visual processing, this new study would suggest that the blindness part comes in at a later stage, and we are at least unconsciously aware that the gorilla is there. Which would make sense, because while inattentional blindness might help us focus and perform better on tasks, zero processing of other things would leave us vulnerable to external dangers. Whether that's like a tiger trying to eat you in the wild, or your kid about to stick a metal fork in an open socket. So instead, this study supports the idea of a flexible attention hierarchy. More important things get more attention. But since the brain can't always know ahead of time which things are going to be important, it has to be able to reorder that hierarchy at a moment's notice. And that might be what movement does. If the movement is slow, the attentional hierarchy carries on as is. If it's fast, that early visual processing step signals the brain to reorder the hierarchy and pay attention to the speeding gorilla. So clearly, there are a lot more details to understand about inattentional blindness. And it's important research, because while a rogue gorilla at a basketball game is a bit unlikely, inattentional blindness does have real-world and possibly deadly consequences. But all this research now might be getting harder to do, because a ton of people now know about the gorilla experiment, and yes, we are making that worse right now. Because people who know about the gorilla experiment are, of course, much more likely to see the gorilla. So while this amusing experiment has served us well for over two decades, we might need to try something new if we want to see the unexpected. Inattentional blindness is a part of our everyday lives, so to help you understand these everyday science topics, Brilliant has a Physics of the Everyday course. It covers topics like car collisions and traffic that can be outcomes of inattentional blindness, along with things like spinning and flipping in gymnastics, which you might miss in a video created to study inattentional blindness. And Brilliant courses are designed to focus and keep your attention on the subject at hand through interactive puzzles and real-world examples. This online learning platform includes thousands of interactive lessons in math, science, and computer science, with bonus puzzles in each of those categories. To try them out for yourself free for 30 days, you can visit brilliant.org slash scishow, or click the link in the description down below. That link also gives you 20% off an annual premium Brilliant subscription. Thanks for watching this scishow video, and thanks to Brilliant for supporting it. <laughs>